So right here we're in my garden and on the paths in between my garden I called up a local tree service company and they basically need to get rid of their wood chips. And so I said, you know, could you just drop off a, a load of hardwood wood chips. So they did that. I ordered a bag of inoculate, which is basically the seed seed spawn of mushrooms, and spread my wood chips on my pads, put the inoculate on there and spread another layer of wood chips. And then a couple months later, I got edible mushrooms growing out of my uh, my yard. So I basically planted mushrooms. So this right here is uh, wine cap strafaria or king strafaria. And it has this beautiful um, red cap. It's usually redder, but these are a couple days old. And on the bottom they have um, purple spores. So the way that mushrooms reproduce is they release these spores that will eventually find an acceptable place to grow. And then they will colonize that. And the good part about having these mushrooms right here is A, they're food. So we are now in you know mid-November, we've had a couple frosts and I'm still getting an amazing source of pro fresh protein growing in my yard. And they also will take those wood chips and they break it down. So if you look in here, you see these wood chips, all the, it's hard to see on the camera, but all these little white mycelia in there, that's the mushrooms breaking down these wood chips and releasing their nutrients and minerals into the soil. And so basically a space that would have been dead space that I would have had to walk on in my garden is now adding an amazing source of uh, compost to my, my soil. And the way that mushrooms grow is they also, they, as they, they have you know, their little roots, and as they grow, they excrete enzymes and acids that break down whatever they're growing through. And then actually the plants can pick up those enzymes and they can use those in different ways. And uh, bacteria and worms can feed on those things. And it just, it takes your, your, the ecology of your garden to a whole new level. So, you know, a lot of people are focused on creating gardens to grow vegetables in their backyard, which I think is fantastic and amazing. But if you want a really, really simple, really easy way to grow food in your backyard, if you grow wine crap so far as you call up your tree service company, get free wood chips, put them in a shady spot in your yard, and inoculate them with mushrooms and just leave them there. No deer is gonna eat them. You know, these things have been out here for a couple days and they're still good. Um, slugs will eventually get them, but not really. So you can just get an amazing source of protein and you know, you can either go to Whole Foods and buy these for 20 bucks a pound or just have them grow in your backyard. And they fruit in the spring and the fall. So you get about one to two months of fruiting time. And if you get a, you get a big flush, you can cut them, you can cook them right then, or you can dry them up into powder to use them for the rest of the year. And um, you can also uh, get different kinds of mushrooms to, to uh, fruit at different times of the year. So they can grow on wood chips, they can grow on straw, they can grow on leaves. So a lot of people have this really lovely uh, tradition in the fall of spending a lot of time uh, collecting their leaves. So rather than sending that to the dump or sending that to a compost facility, collect those leaves and you can plant bluets, you can plant strafaria, you can plant oyster mushrooms, all these different kinds of things that you can plant in what is seen as a waste, res uh, waste product. You can create it into a resource. If I were to just leave this as it is, I would probably get these things blooming for the next two or three years. So it took me, you know, half hour to an hour of, you know, straight work putting down this patch. And that's, you know, two to three years of food. That's the thing too, is that people don't realize how delicious mushrooms are because we get the standard, you know, button and portobello mushrooms, it's the same species. And they're, you know, of all the mushrooms, those are pretty bland. So, um, strafaria right here, it kind of tastes like, I've heard it described as like mashed potatoes with a wine sauce, but it's almost like this nutty, rich flavor. And each mushroom has its own completely unique flavor because it's a whole kingdom. So, you know, saying that one mushroom tastes like another could be like saying, you know, a lamb tastes like a lobster. Lob those are both within the animal family, so if you think they taste similar, they don't. So you can just have this whole, it's a, it's a whole variety, a whole new variety of uh, flavors to add to your food and, um, and just an incredible source of nutrition. If you want to learn about anything, mushrooms are one of the most fascinating things uh, to learn about. And we don't know anything about mushrooms. We've named about 5% of the mushrooms in the world and um, there are, we have anywhere from 1.5 to 6 million species of mushrooms.